I'm so glad that you've chosen to worship with the people of Abingdon United Methodist Church. Before we begin worship today, I want to share a couple of announcements. First, it's my pleasure to announce that after months of waiting, the governor, the health department, and the bishop uh, have all the pieces have fallen into place that we can begin worship again, uh, assuming that we enter into phase four before July. And we'll be starting in-person worship in our sanctuary after we, you know, work on some details on July 12th. During those next weeks, what we're going to do is have one worship service at 9 a.m. in person in the sanctuary, and we will have an online worship at 10.20 a.m. Um, all of this is going to be in flux as we move forward, um, meaning that we want continuous feedback about what's working, what isn't working, and we're going to make continual adjustments as we need to. Secondly, we are living in the midst of the economic fallout from COVID-19. Uh, the Community Food Pantry is open Tuesdays from noon to three, every Tuesday, and families can come up to twice a month to get assistance. The cupboard in the closet is at the community center, and it is open Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and people can come up to once a week and receive assistance there. Feed My Lambs continues to provide snack packs for students uh, along with their school lunches so that students have food over the weekend. And together, all three of these ministries uh, make it possible for people in Abington to, to thrive even when there are limited resources. Over the last few weeks, after, over the last couple of months, there have been extra resources available from the state and from the federal government. But I fear a time will come when not all of those resources will be available, and we have set up a network that is poised to, to handle whatever comes our way over these next months. Please let your friends and family know, uh, or, or, or know yourself, that help is available if you are struggling with food insecurity. We want to be there for one another as a community. With that, let us turn to God and begin our time of worship. Welcome to the worship with the people of the Abingdon United Methodist Church. Today we continue our worship series, Open Our Eyes, in which we are trying to see, hear, and love the people and the world in new ways. This week we try to hear the people, especially the people with ideas that make us angry and the people who don't speak with respect. With our ears wide open, we light a candle to remind us that we are not alone in worship. Christ is present with us, and we are present with one another, even when we must worship online. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, it is sometimes hard to speak of your love to others. It is sometimes scary to speak at all when confronted by the troubles of this world. And sometimes we even say the wrong things. Good and loving God, help us to, first, listen to the world around us, to hear the people we don't know yet, to hear the people we don't even like, so that we will better know how to speak your love to them. And give us the courage to share your love, your kingdom, your world with the world that so deeply needs it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Will you please join me in singing our opening song? I want to see 
to see you. I share now with you a Father's Day prayer attributed to the Methodist Church in Africa. Loving and merciful God, our thoughts and prayers today are turned toward our fathers. For those whose fathers have increased the joy in their families' lives, we give you thanks. For those good men who sustain and support us in our living, who, who love us no matter what, we give you thanks. For those whose fathers have been a source of hurt and pain, may their he wounds be healed. May they find in you, in us, in others, the nurturing love that's needed for their well-being. We pray also that these fathers find forgiveness. For those fathers who are separated from their children, give them insight and perseverance to par parent in whatever ways are open to them. Give them the courage to make the decisions that, that allow their children to thrive. For those fathers whose relationships with their children have proven difficult or disappointing, we pray. We pray, too, for those fathers who have lost a child. We turn to you, O holy God, for consolation where consolation seems impossible. For single fathers who struggle to be both parents to their children, may they find the strength and wisdom for their task. For those who have recently lost or who are facing the immediate loss of their fathers, may they find comfort in the love that their fathers have given them. Amen. Each Sunday morning, whether we are in person or online, we have an opportunity to share our prayer requests, our joys and our concerns, the good and the bad of life. This week, we're trying something a little bit different. Uh, this week, I am lighting candles, uh, the number of candles I know of uh, for people who need our prayers. And as I light these candles, with each candle, perhaps you have names to lift up along with the names I lift up as I light these candles. Let us turn now in prayer uh, with this prayer video. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care for lives saved and lives lost for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote. And all the medicine makers, praise be the journalists keeping us informed. Praise be the teachers finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health, praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless and refugees. 
Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lasts, who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues that they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean, each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance and slowness. Praise be the birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, May we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. May we say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Seems of 
Today's gospel comes to us from Matthew chapter 10, verses 26 to 31. Therefore, don't be afraid of those people because nothing is hidden that won't be revealed and nothing secret that won't be brought out into the open. What I say to you in darkness, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, announced from the rooftops, don't be afraid of those who kill the body but can't kill the soul. Instead, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul. Aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin? But not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Amen. Carrie and I have a ritual every morning. We turn on the news. One thing that I've learned from the news over these last months is that there's a lot to be afraid of. <laughs> it's not just on the news. I talk to people all the time who, who share their fears about the pandemic, who share fears of the economic fallout, uh, people who feel fearful of protesters and rioters, or people who are afraid of the police. People who are fearful of President Trump and his power, or Nancy Pelosi and hers. I talk with people who are afraid that the church is about to fail because we haven't been back in person yet. I talk to people who feel fearful of being alone any longer. I think that there is a lot in this world for us to be afraid of. But then we turn to this scripture that starts off, do not be afraid. In fact, three times, do not be afraid. That sounds crazy on the face of it. We have plenty to, to fear. I turned to N.T. Wright this week as I was preparing for uh, the sermon on, on Matthew 10. And N.T. Wright supposes that the number one thing quoted from the Bible probably is do not fear or do not be afraid. And, and he's probably right. Uh, not only do I hear people talk about that all the time, it's all the way through the Bible. <laughs> Matthew doesn't have a corner on the market of do not be afraid. But, but wouldn't we be unengaged idiots to not be afraid of some of the things in this world? Don't we need to be aware of the dangers that face us? And, and the answer is yes to that second one at least. But we needn't be paralyzed by fear to be engaged in danger. And the fear, the fear can be overwhelming when we face uh, difficult odds but it can all change when we recognize that our God who created us, our God who, who, who has counted even the hairs on our head, our God who loves us so much, our God who cares for all of creation, our God who 
loves even the sparrow, how much more must that God love us? When we recognize God's love and that God is engaged in this world, we no longer need to be consumed by fear. We can be freed from fear. We can live as people not consumed by that which we cannot control, but as people who know of God's love and know of God's ongoing work in this world. We can live as people who, who listen for the Spirit, the Spirit that's prompting us to make a, a, a way in this world for love and peace. We can live as people who are unencumbered by fear of those who are different from us. We can live as those who are not so intimidated that we can't listen to the cries of people around us in the world. When we watch protests and riots, we can be afraid. <laughs> or we can be attentive to racial injustice and listen for the whisper of the Spirit to shout from the rooftops of God's inclusive love. When someone confronts us in anger, we can be afraid. We can either be afraid of them or, or maybe the fallout from the confrontation. Or we can call on the Spirit. We can listen for God in the midst of the conflict and try to speak with godly compassion, humility, and kindness. When we face brokenness of relationship, whether between uh, parent and child or, or uh, between parents, we can be afraid of what that would mean. Or, or we can listen for what God might be doing in the midst of that conflict or brokenness and find a new way to become family. In this world of COVID-19, I don't think I have to tell you that it would be easy to either be afraid or to totally try and ignore the danger altogether. Or we can hear the stories of those who are most affected, prepare our community f the best we can for what might be the worst, and unafraid we can continue to feed people and love people and proclaim God's love, not because of fear, but because of the broad and, and penetrating love of God for all of creation. If God loves the, the sparrow, how much more God, must God love us? We needn't, we needn't get lost in our fears. But we can get lost in the goodness of our God. Allow ourselves to be uh, completely wrapped up in the love and the compassion of our God and share that compassion and love with the people around us. Amen. i
May we go into this world in whatever way we can, listening for the cries of those around us, trying to understand who these people are, looking within ourselves for the resources that we have available to share, and trying to hear the cry of the Holy Spirit, encouraging us forward, sharing what we have with others and ensuring that this world would be transformed, that this community would be made whole, that, that our spirits would be shared with those around us, and that the kingdom of God would come into its fullest. Go now in peace. Our time of worship is at its end, but our time with Christ goes on and on. Abingdon United Methodist Church welcomed us into this community uh, less than a year ago. We, we felt as though we were treated uh, like one of the community. And, and the, the entire Abingdon uh, area has, has welcomed us and loved us in, in ways that we never imagined possible. And, and leaving family and, and moving away was anxiety producing when we had a little one and yet you all have surrounded us with love and, and treated Henry as one of your own. Today I uh, am excited to say that we all get to welcome another one into our community. Um, Carrie and I are expecting and are due in early December. So uh, we ask for your prayers, but we also just want to share our joy with all of you. I don't know if it's been apparent to everybody, but over the last couple of months, I've made the intentional choice, whether right or not, to worship at home with all of you. It, it seemed right in the midst of shelter in place, uh, one, to, to model sheltering in place, but two, that all of us, including your pastor, we were all at home together worshiping. We couldn't be in the sanctuary together so we could be at home together. And I'm so excited to uh, announce today that beginning on July 12th, in-person worship will be in the church sanctuary at 9 a.m. We will do temperature checks at the door, and there will be some other restrictions uh, that are unfortunate but necessary to, to fall within the guidelines of our conference uh, and the health department and, and our insurance. I also want you to know that we're going to be continually engaged with those authorities to find out the moment we can begin doing other things in worship. And then at 1020 each week, beginning July 12th, we will have online worship in a format much like this, and it, it'll be uh, very similar. The two services will be based on the same scripture, uh, will probably have the same message, but one will be created to be most effective online, and one will be created to be more effective in person. I hope that you'll join us one way or the other, and know that whether we are online or in person, our God is present in our worship, and that in the midst of all of this chaos of the last few months, I've seen our church responding with generosity, uh, acting with insight and leadership. I have seen this church step out in faith as we feed the community, as we try new forms of worship, as, as we try to be the church in a new sort of way. And so I know that many have been f concerned that we aren't back in worship, but I want you to know that as we try to keep people safe, this church has grown, and I have no doubt with the faith that I've seen present with this people, this church is only going to grow stronger. Secondly, we are living in the midst of the economic fallout from COVID-19. Uh, the Community Food Pantry is open Tuesdays from noon to three every Tuesday, and families can come up to twice a month to get assistance. The cupboard and the closets at the community center, and it is open Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. 
and people can come up to once a week and receive assistance there. Feed My Lambs continues to provide snack packs for students uh, along with their school lunches so that students have food over the weekend. And together, all three of these ministries uh, make it possible for people in Abington to, to thrive even when there are limited resources. Over the last few weeks, after, over the last couple of months, there have been extra resources available from the state and from the federal government. But I fear a time will come when not all of those resources will be available, and we have set up a network that is poised to, to handle whatever comes our way over these next months. Please let your friends and family know, uh, or, or, or know yourself, that help is available if you are struggling with food insecurity.